What's up guys? Welcome back to another episode of Dark Souls 3 Lore Through. Uh, we're going to try to continue on this lore bit that we've been kind of digging on with uh, Queen of Lothric, Osiris, and the Untended Graves here. But first, before we get into all that stuff, let's read all the myriad items that we uh, discovered in the last couple episodes. Um, and see if we can learn anything. Soul of Champion Gundir. Once a champion came late to the festivities and was greeted by a shrine without fire and a bell that would not toll. The champion evidently being Gundir, and we can see here ourselves that the shrine is without fire and that presumably the bell isn't tolling. We'll talk about that more later. Uh, Black Knight Glaive. Glaive of the Black Knights who wandered the lands used to face chaos demons. The unique attack of this glaive greatly reduces enemy poise, reflecting the tremendous size of the enemies that the knights have fearlessly faced. And we get a spin sleep with, sweep with that. Claw. Weapon favored by intelligencers of an eastern land. The laceration inflicts do not mend easily. When two-handed claws are equipped to each hand. Well, that's cool. So you get two with only the one didn't realize that. And you have a leaping slash, which is a cool thing with the headshot. Uh, we read that. And the Shadow Mask. This is interesting. Black cloth worn by spooks from an eastern land. The late King Osiris was obsessed with dragons, to the extent that he would later be known as the Consumed King. Countless assassins were sent to end his reign, but none returned. So someone wanted Osiris to not be obsessed with dragons. We already talked about that could be the queen, but it's also from an eastern land. But let's read some other stuff. Rotting, tattered, wrap. Uh, tire of the grave wardens of the cathedral of the deep. Grave wardens were tasked with disposing of the ever-rising corpses that plagued the cathedral. Their clothes are utterly putrid, drenched in the blood and mucilage of their undertaking. Yeah, because Aldrich was eating everything, so there was lots of bodies there. And these we've all read before, and I don't think we get to it now, but we gotta read that dragon ring. I think I'm trying to read, try to find something about uh, Guinevere or Queen of Lothric, because there's some part that I want to get to, which I can't find. And I guess we missed the Dragon Slayer ring for now. Um, but uh, the Eastern Land, I mean, the Eastern Land that wants him dead uh, could be... I don't know. Could be related to High Wolf Wolnir, like to Serlan. It could be related to Shiva. Um, it could be related to... Mira, I guess Mira. I think Mira was said to be in the east, uh, at least from Vinheim's perspective. So I don't know if that means anything. Um, but I mean, because he was obsessed with dragons, he had assassins sent. I think that's quite telling. Uh, let's read the hidden blessing. Holy water blessed by Queen of Lothric. There is a grave in Lothric that sees no visitors, a dark place where rootless warriors rest. The Queen of Lothric alone cared to wish the poor souls good fortune. Again, another indication that she might have had something to do with the whole process of the Ashen Hollows becoming the next champion or whatever. Um, and I tried to do a real quick read-through of things. Um to see if there's anything, because I, I swear there was another real good description of uh, Queen of Lothric, and of course I don't find it, and I probably have to search for it um, online, but, you know, if I do think of it, then I will, um, I might share it. It also could be a, a something we read at for example, at uh, Ludlith's thing that we didn't actually buy, so, yeah. So anyway, um, now we're going to go on to the um, um, 
Firelink Shrine, or at least what we think should be Firelink Shrine, because, I mean, that's where we are. I mean, that's what should be there. And we're going to run across uh, a number of uh, Black Knights. And the question kind of arises, why are there Black Knights there? I'm still searching for a description, and here I find the dragon ring thing that we need to read. So, But why are the dra Black Knights there um, is the question that I'll ask you, um, maybe casual viewer who's either played this or hasn't. There are Black Knights in Firelink Shrine. Why would that be? Um, I have my best theory, but I, uh, I I don't know. I don't know that anyone knows definitively, but um, everyone's got their opinions, I guess. We'll talk about it. So Dragon Scale Ring. Ring of Osiris, former king of Lothric. See, former king. So maybe that eagle is his... In his later years, Osiris became fascinated with dragons. After going mad, he was more commonly known as Consumed Him. The Consumed King ascribed his resilience to the divine protection of the dragon scale. The path of the dragon, basically. And he became a dragon from it. Which is what <laughs> they've been promised to do. So I I, I predicted uh, in this episode during the lore through uh, when I you know when I didn't ruin all my by the way this is another voiceover if uh, I keep forgetting to say that that's why you're not hearing any audio um, and I apologize for that I know that's annoying but my my audio got completely corrupted with this um, uh, as I've said before. Um, but during the actual playthrough of this, I predicted, or I was theorizing that um, Champion Gundir was the previous king of Lothric before Osiris, and that he came here <coughs> um, after his world fell to dark in order to save his kingdom, and came here too late, and then became a champion here, and then we have a whole other story happen. Based on some of the descriptions we're reading there, I think I'd be pretty safe to assume that um, that he is not the former king, and that the former king is Osiris, that he's no longer king of Lothric. He's a dragon now. He's not a king. Um, so the Cathedral Knight shield that says the emblem was the, or the crest was of the former king, I think they're just speaking strictly of Osiris. So Osiris's emblem was an eagle, incidentally, uh, at least if you believe that. All right, well, the long wait is up, or the, you know, you, you ding, 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 time to enter in your answers. Why would there be Black Knights in Firelink Shrine right now. Um, well, um, my theory <laughs> is that, um, you know, when we were playing the first game, oh, by, by the way, the cheapest thing happens to me here. Not cheap, but like, I just, uh, just an unfortunate, like, something I can't get out of, I just basically like lose an, an ember and I can't do anything about it. I can't believe I parried that guy. Um, yeah. Like apply, applying these movesets to my knowledge of parrying in this game versus one is very tough. Um, but yeah, so I get stuck in here it's actually a place I don't think you can get out of. And uh, it's so easy to get into, so it sucks that you can get into here. I mean, that I just feel like there's very few areas like this in like Dark Souls 1, for example. And of course, that guy just happened to notice me, and I had no chance. <laughs> so, okay, so in the first game... Underneath Firelink Shrine was the Kiln of the First Flame, and uh, that's where we saw all of the dead uh, Black Knights. The Black Knights who had fought against the Chaos Demons uh, and, wa and were the most loyal to Gwyn and walked with him to the Kiln, or what became the Kiln, and, um, 
and then he sacrificed himself, and then a lot of them died, and 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 walked around the um, Lord Rana's spirits and stuff. Now, so they essentially are in like they are in mass in kind, like at Firelink Shrine in the first game. They're underneath Firelink Shrine, but they are there. So I kind of said in the first few episodes that I don't believe that this is the Firelink Shrine. I think this is a Firelink Shrine. And I think that, um, you know, this could be the one of this, like, you know, if you talk about, like, epochs and eras and whatever, like, that this one, it lasts five, like, cycles. And so we have the five people that extend the fire flame. Obviously, Aldrich, Ludlith, Lothric, Yorm, and the Abyss Watchers. Um... And maybe it's not related to the Firelink Shrine of Dark Souls 1. But assuming that it is, and that it's been modified in some way, and that we are, like, in Lordran, in a sense, and, like, that, you know, blah, 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 that in this age, in this point in the story, like the Dark Knights either have emerged or are returning back to the kiln of the First Flame, which presumably is underneath this area. It's my best shot. <laughs> so anyway, things are kind of weird here too. Um, we can see there's an item there. Not weird, but inconsistent with how the first part of the game has moved. So we can see that there's an item on that grave there, which is the grave of uh, Artorius. It's got Artorius' greatsword on it. And it happens to be Lord Blade Ciaran's ring, which we found on Artorius' grave in the first game. Uh, the third of the fourth ring, uh, associated with the Four Knights of Gwyn, the mass Ciaran was the only woman to serve in Gwyn's Four Knights, and her curved sword granted a swift death to any and all enemies of the throne. So yeah, we have Ornsteins, we have Goths, we have Ciarans. We don't have Artorias's, um, or the Wolf Ring. But me thinks that we might get it if they have all three of them in there. Do they have all four in Dark Souls 2? I know we didn't find them all, but I don't know if they exist. I know there's the Leo Ring. And... There's something here in every, uh, kind of, and there's, like, places that, so it, presumably Old Master, Master whatever, came here and, um, and, uh, fought Gundir himself and came here and died, pro probably to the Black Knights, and then essentially goes hollow, and, um, and then we fight his hollowed form. Which, I don't know why that means that we almost died there. Why he fights at the Vort fight. Does that mean he fights during our timeline there? Or that he fought back in the day? And does that mean that everything else about... I mean, I guess at that point, that is the beginning of that point for this timeline that leads us to here. So maybe, I, maybe it's just him getting here. He's like another champion or another ashen hollow like us and like Henri is um so anyway i think that's all the knights here and all the items about you know in, in here there's more items inside of course um but let's check out firelink shrine itself. By the way, it hasn't said Firelink Shrine. It just said Untended Graves. I don't know, unless I missed something, but... But yeah, it is in fact the, um, the Five Thrones from our timeline. 
still. Um, so if it is in the past, it's not too distant in the past that this situation isn't here. Uh, and you can't touch anything. You can't go in here. You can't. There's no ladder there. Someone must have put a ladder there since we were here. Maybe Gilligan. I almost laughed when I said that, but you know he is the ladder guy. Though he never had those fancy retractable ladders. So let's go look and see. Are these the same people? Is this a different time? Yorm. Watches the abyss. Is this the same? L Lothric. Ludlith. And Aldrich. Although Ludlith is not there. There's no bonfire. And there's a coiled sword fragment. As if there was one. So it is a homeward bone. A uh, fragment, fragment of the coiled sword of a bonfire which served its purpose long ago returns caster to last bonfire. Bonfires are linked to one another irreversibly, retaining their affinity long after their purpose is exhausted. So presumably this is the fragment of the bonfire for the last person and the last firekeeper that was here before us. And that somehow another coiled sword gets stuck in a gundir and then we use that to make a new bonfire. So no Uria, no Yol, no Grey Rat, no Carla, no Cornix, no Orbeck. All those make sense because we are bringing them here. But uh, Andre was here when we arrived, so there's his his weapon and his tool. Metal hammer passed down amongst blacksmith of the shrine. Serves as a strike weapon, but also excels at reducing poison, breaking the guard of a shield. Of course, a hammer's true potential is realized in the hands of a blacksmith. Perseverance, which is a uh, faith base, which, you know, he's related to the gods. In fact, a lot, you know, he used to be the son of Gwyn before they changed it, so it makes sense. And he knew the blacksmith deity. A cursed sword of unknown origin bearing uncanny streaks on its blade. Attacks also damage its wielder. The sword is not unlike a thing misshapen, granted life, but never welcome in this world. In other words, chaos. And yeah, we, we got this in the first game. Um, uh, and there's a hidden wall here. And instead of where Arena was, we find the eyes of a firekeeper and... Presumably a previous firekeeper, dead. And so reading that, it's a key item, reveals horrors to the sightless firekeeper. A pair of dark eyes, said to be the eyes of the first firekeeper and the light that was lost by all firekeepers to come. It reveals to the sightless firekeepers things that they should never see. Hmm. May, it's kind of implying it's the reason that all fire keepers are blind. So I guess we'll have to learn about that later. Now one thing that is interesting is that here at the shrine is the shrine handmaiden in the flesh. Well fancy that. A lost lamb wandereth in with nary a peep from the bell. Well thou shouldst my purpose no what can this old handmaid provide thee so she doesn't recognize this um and people have done tests where they don't talk to her in the beginning of the game but they first talk to her here and then they then talk to her after they talk to her and she has this moment where she like kind of remembers you and so that is a very strong case for the thing that we're in the past. Um, that's probably the biggest thing. There's a lot of things you can put together, but that certainly um, allows for it. So let's see um, what she 
let's talk to her and then let's see what she is selling because presumably she still has stuff from the previous quote unquote playthrough um, or whatever. Um, I'm just talking at length about how she recognizes you and all that stuff. Um, and if you kill her here, she will not appear in the future. Like, she will have died in your future. Very interesting. Very consistent for a very inconsistent plot point. <laughs> or at least unclear and vague plot point. Um, I can't imagine what I'm putting together here because I, I do talk a lot about a lot of different things here but I can't imagine just speaking to her that I'm making a lot of connections here because there's a couple key facts we'll need to see in order for us to um, kind of get to the next big part of my theory here about what's going on um, but yes we've established that this where we are and where we've been basically the entire game is in the past as related to the firelink shrine that we start the game in to skirt the curse's grasp tarry not for long Tis dark for now, but not a soul stirs. But remember, fires are known to fade in quiet. Or perhaps thou art captive already, like the poor girl. Um, not sure what that means. That could refer to two people, one of which we haven't met yet. The other is maybe the firekeeper who is bound to this area. And we are kind of later. And maybe she's laughing about that. Also, she says it's dark now, and this could be the age of dark, but like at the same time, the game we've been fighting in this whole time is not dark. So that's why I'm saying it's either vague or inconsistent, I'm not sure. But she doesn't have a lot of items, but she does have the Wolf Knight Helm, essentially Artorius's um, said, Helm of a knight tainted by the dark of the abyss, the twilight blue tassel is damp and will ever remain so. A vanquished knight left behind only wolf's blood in his legendary legacy of duty, the undead legion of Farron was formed to bear his torch, and the armor of these abyss watchers suggests their own eventual end. And the priestess ring, a ring engraved with a portrait of the high priestess, in Lothric, the High Priestess has long been considered one of the three pillars of the king's rule. The High Priestess also served as the prince's wet nurse. So we know about the three pillars. We know two of them now. Uh, knights, the High Priestess, and there's a third one that we're going to find out. Um, incidentally, it says that the High Priestess served as the prince's wet nurse. I guess I've always assumed that this is the wet nurse for the king, like for Ocelot, because Queen of Lothric left, but that wouldn't be called the prince. The prince is Lothric. Um, and I, yeah, maybe we'll piece that together later. So the thing that I kind of put together here is that Lothric has not, um, Lothric has not become a Lord of Cinder. I mean, that's what Emma was trying to tell us, and, and, and we'll learn more about later, but he has not become a Lord of Cinder, and yet he is, um, he, he's got a throne. Similarly, Well, I'm going to I'm going to wait for a second. So um I think I debate giving the Eyes of the Firekeeper to um the uh the Firekeeper just because I I don't know if that triggers the the ending I don't want. 
Um, I don't think it does, but like if it does, I don't want to give it to her. I certainly don't. I mean, I'll sacrifice the dialogue, she says. So I decide to uh, go to Ludlith right away. Um, and I grab a few souls just in case. Uh, I say go to Lilith right away, but I reinforce my Estus because I know I have an Estus shard. And um, and I also change this to two because that works for me a little bit better. Um, but anyway, so now we don't go to Lilith. And so she doesn't say anything to us different, even though she might recognize us. Um, here's where I contemplate giving her the eyes and decide not to, and I will not give her the eyes just because why well, complicate things. So I guess I decide to level up real quick. I decided to do a quality build in the sense of strength versus faith. So we're going to go to Ludlith here, and I'll read what he says here. Found her, did we? And the black eyes that shimmer within, I see. Tis as if it were but yesterday. We did all we could to spare her from them. Much has happened since. Mayhap I should apprise thee of what the thin light of those eyes might reveal to the eyeless firekeeper. Scenes of betrayal, things never intended for her ken. Visions of this age's end. And I don't know when to start talking about my theories, because I don't know when I start moving on. But I now suppose that the age we were just in, the dark age, the age that this all takes place in, is the age in which Ludlith comes and becomes the Lord of Cinder, and he still remains on his throne right now. We don't have to summon him back because he was the latest one. He had a throne there, but so does Lothric, and he hasn't done it yet. Um, so I am starting to think that there is an order to these things, and that their order is evident in the way that the stories play out. Um... And so he says, The eyes shew a world destitute of fire, a barren place of endless darkness, a place born of betrayal. So I willed myself, Lord, to link the fire to paint a new vision into the eyes. What is thine intent? It's interesting you use the word paint there because we certainly deal with paintings in this game and in Dark Souls 1. And my theory about him would apply to paintings being a thing. So let's keep that in mind moving forward, that he said paint. But now I'm trying to put it all together. So Lothric has a throne, but he hasn't linked the fire. Ludlith did have a throne and had not yet linked the fire. And I think the order is Yorm, then the Abyss Watchers, and we st in the previous age, uh, we still see a little remnants of the Abyss Watchers with the the Hawkring and 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 uh, Artorius is set, but the story of the world is all about Aldrich, so I think Aldrich is the the most recent one, and the one of the age we've just played. And then after Aldrich is Ludlith, and he comes and he burns himself, and then after that it's meant to be Lothric, who was destined to be so, as he was named Lothric, not the kingdom after him, but him after the kingdom. And it says on his grave, last hope in his line, like it was 
predestined for this to happen. So my theory about who Ludlith is and where he comes from, which I will not talk about until we get into the depths of the DLC, I think is much more important now that we've kind of put this together. Um, or at least I'd like to think so, that this is the way it's supposed to be. It's certainly my theory. The eyes, oh yeah, so he doesn't say anything new. Let's look at the items that he does have that uh, we haven't read. So yeah, White Dragon Breath from Seed the Scalus with Osiris's Sor Sorcery of the Deluded Osiris. Um, Seath's research seemed to strike a chord with old Big Hat, who in his mad disrobed state made divine works such as this his own. Osiris was no doubt edified by this. He also was fascinated by Seath and Logan. Seath was an interesting character. And here it is! Special miracle granted to the maidens of the Princess of Sunlight, Guinevere. The miracles of Guinevere, the princess cherished by all, bestow their blessing on a great many warriors. So at the very least, this was a maiden of Guinevere, because this is where Soothing Sunlight was given to, but like, it said that she was an, uh, a daughter of the old royalty, which would imply that she's Guinevere, the dancer, but she's almost certainly the Queen of Lothric, and the dancer is not the queen. I don't know. I don't know if this is just like mixed whatever or if whatever. That's confusing to me. That's like the one thing. Legendary dragon weapon associated with Seath, the Moonlight Greatsword. Um, Osiris, the consumed king, was infatuated with the search for moonlight, but in the end, it never revealed itself to him. Just like... Uh, um, Benhard of Hugo, although he didn't have the real Moonlight Greatsword, but he thought he did, and he thought he could unlock it. Paired enchanted swords that Pond of Sullivan bestowed upon the Dancer of the Boreal Valley, these blades, symbolic of the Dancer's vows, are enchanted by dark magic in the right hand and fire in the left, mirroring the Pontiff, and we kind of put that together, although I had already read this description too, but we've already mentioned it is what I should say. And then we have Dancer's Grace, which is, it does the strong attack, and it continues the performance until stamina is exhausted, which I didn't know that was the case, but I think that's kind of cool. Um, and then we have Gundir. Halbert of Gundir the champion received when he was charged with his duty. The old cast iron, iron halberd has the power to break poise and is said to never crumble, seeming to suggest that Gundir was fated to eternal service from the beginning. Okay. Yep. Portion of a steel chain used to restrain Gundir. Gain vigor, endurance, and vitality, but take extra damage. A prisoner is one who has staked everything on a belief, a proclivity most apparent in the greatest of champions. Maybe Gundir is a woman, and the Shrine Maiden was speaking about her being um, bound. You know. It's certainly possible, but, um, yeah, uh, maybe, uh, Ludlith and, and folk chain Gundir there to become the, uh, the, the Eudix, essentially, make a champion a Eudix. So now I go around and I speak to people and, uh, I don't think there's any th new dialogues. Um, so, we, uh, the only thing new is items in, uh, the Shrine Handmaiden, uh, her thing. She has some boss stuff. Um, but yeah, what do you think of my theory? Um, I mean, it's not a profound theory as of yet that, uh, Ludlith was the latest, uh, champion of Ash. Or Lord of Cinder, and that we were in his world, and we got there before he did, and and that Ludlith 
restore the Age of Fire. And now we're at the end of that Age of Fire, and the bell then tolls, and we are not yet dark in our reality. And we are going to then be the last champion slash the person that convinces Lothric to be the last champion. We'll have to read much more about Queen of Lothric, some of the other characters we haven't met yet, and um, and uh, um, Lothric and his brother to, in order to can to form a more coherent theory about exactly what that means about us being a champion of Ash and Lothric being the Lord of Cinder or not being the Lord of Cinder and how those are different <laughs> like I mean we are either going to become Lothric's Lord of Cinder or we are going to usurp it I guess or we're going to let it die again You know, again, this is very, like, ambiguous. So to end out this episode, although I do this <laughs> I do this in the most poorly planned way possible, uh, there's a bunch of items that you can trade with the crows, um, and I have been collecting them all, and I have all but one, and uh, I'm not really concerned about the last one, but I'll, I'll probably do it before the episode, you know, before the series is out. But of course I don't have them all in my inventory, so we just do some of them. Um, but the that gives us the Iron Helm, Solaris Iron Helm. Um, and then this seed at Tree of Giants gives us the uh, Iron Leggings. We already got the Iron Cuffs from a Homeward Bone. And a Sigbrow gets us the uh, Armor of the Sun. I wonder how you get his uh, shield. I don't remember. Um, so I'm looking through my notes and trying to figure out what to put in there. And I, of course, use this hidden blessing. Luckily, I bought one and then I picked one up, so I'm able to replace that. However, I'm out of divine, so I have to buy those. And then I do this, and now we're starting to get some of the carvings. I, this is all the unique items, by the way. So, I mean, these aren't necessary for lore, but I just wanted to um, get everything that's unique and then kind of, I don't know, just have everything. Um, you know, as I say, it's semi-100%. It's not 100%. 100%. I mean, I... I suppose I could go and farm all the covenants and then do an episode about all the covenant items that you get um, at the end, but um, I, I don't know if I have any interest in doing that. Um, but for these kind of unique things, I figure, you know, why not uh, try to go through here and get as much as I can and... Um, and at least we can talk about what we can talk about. Um, so yeah, I get all the items that I need, and then I, you know, I do have to buy some items, which I'm glad I had an extra hidden blessing because I don't believe there's another hidden blessing. Like she sold out of her one hidden blessing. And I don't think Grey Rat sells a hidden blessing. And then he talks about going to the castle, because I went to the castle and I didn't really realize it. Not a single man has returned from the castle unscathed, even back in the day. But I don't want to sit around and die a petty rat. And I consider myself your friend. I refuse him, hope, thinking that maybe that would affect me buying something. Uh, but he, we can still tell him to go. So yeah, he does have a hidden blessing. That's good. Except instead of a thousand, it's uh, eight thousand, which you know. Yeah. Um. So 
yeah, he said change your mind. I said yes. So now I will send him to pillage Lothric, but he cannot survive this, no matter what. And it's a way to end his story. Uh, we could kill him now and get his ashes, but then we have kind of like sin on our hand. Um, might as well send him out, have him die, and then collect his ashes when we find him in Lothric, which you know, I know where he is. So that won't be a problem. The same thing we're going to do with Orbeck. Uh, I don't know how Cornix does that. I assume it's similar. We don't need to do that with Carla. We have everything that she has already in uh, Shrine Handmaiden, so we read all of her items. And so I don't think she has ashes. I don't know. You know, at the, at the very, very end, obviously, we'll also kill everyone. So I leave the vertebra shackle, which gives us a uh, Lugatil's mask, <laughs> funnily enough. Very interesting description on that. Put the divine blessing down, and that gets us another uh, carving. All carved by Goth, by the way, should you have forgotten. Uh, another thank you carving. And this is another carving. All right. <laughs> oh, I tried to go like a real quick shortcut here and I die. Still wasting embers until this day, I swear. Um, but I don't really care about the ash of uh, the souls. Uh, so we just read hello carving, blah 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 blah. This head says hello. So it's an unknown origin from an arch tree. Have another look. Do you sense the amicability in its eyes? The head says thank you. Have another look. Is this not a face of gratitude? This head says, very good. Have another look. Does it appear not appear rather jovial? Have another look. Isn't it quite the expression of atonement? Look again. Can you hear the desperation of its plea? I'm sorry. Or help me. Okay. Um... So let's read some stuff. Large durable iron helm known as the as a hume. This helm uh, with a red feather is said to have belonged to a knight of sunlight in a previous age. The hume has no particular powers but is of fine quality and appears to have been looked after with greatest of care. I don't know what hume is. Um, I suppose I could look it up but I don't want to miss um, the other uh, things. Lugatil's mask. Mask attached to a ceremonial hat. A hollow once fought valiantly with this mask, but feared the fading of herself, and implored a comrade remember her name. That was us. Remember, perhaps that is why this gentleman's mask is named after a woman. Armor of the Sun. The choice attire of a singular knight of sunlight from a previous age. The symbol was painted by the knight himself, but the armor never bore any special power. Same description as in the first game. Yeah, it's interesting about Lucatil's mask that, I mean, I guess it's a, ma a face of a man is what they maybe mean, but like, I think it's funny that they, like, the description assumes male, but, you know, we know it was a female wearing a male mask because we talked to her. Uh, said to be the leggings of a knight of sunlight of a previous age has no particular powers. All right, now she has a few items to read and then we should be finishing up with this episode final loose ends video well maybe not final loose ends but so I just try to make sure I don't miss anything but um, basically I think there's two sets of boss item um, boss uh, armors that we can read dancer 
Crowned more by the dancer, the mirage-like aura veil is said to be an article of the old gods, permitted only for direct descendants of the old royal family. I don't know what that means. I don't know who that's referring to. I don't know who had a veil. So if you know, let me know in the comments, because I... Or I'll, I'll have to go research it. I don't know. The black eyes of the pontiff eventually transform the dancer into a beastly creature, her armor fusing with her own hide. It's interesting, the black eyes of the pontiff and the black eyes of the firekeeper. I don't know if that's related or not. Excellent stuff. Gundir. Ancient helm of a set of cast iron armor belonging to champion Gundir, modeled after a former king. Again, that's where I get the idea. Gundir, or the belated champion, was bested by an unknown warrior. He then, maybe us, he then became sheathed to a coiled sword in hopes that someday the first flame would be linked once more. I was guessing that maybe he was the former king, the eagle on the cathedral knights, but I don't know. There's more evidence that he's not that one. But he certainly could have been the King of Lothar before then, just not the one they're referring to. Because it does specifically say in that one description, former King Osiris. So, I mean, that's a huge thing. Um, but, you know, it does have a crown. It, it does look like whatever. Um, maybe it's related to something from Dark Souls 2 or something. Like, drink, I'd like to uh, Vendor or something. I don't know. The crown, you know, the, all the crowns from whatever. We read the Xanthus stuff before. Sage's so big hat. All this stuff. Uh, there's nothing new. So, yeah, I mean, that will be uh, it for this. Um, for this episode, I think I uh, I might level up, or maybe I already leveled up. I don't my my sword, I don't really remember. But um, yeah, so after this, we are going to um, I don't, I'm not sure if I want to do Arch Dragon Peak or whether I want to just run into the Grand Archives. Or sorry, like go through um, Lothar Castle and then to the Grand Archives. I think I'll probably save Arch Dragon Peak for later, just because it's like a, you know, like a DLC. I'll do Arch Dragon Peak, then Ashes of Ariandel, and then Ring City after that. I think after we beat the game, or at least get close to it. Um, but we're very close, so. Uh, join to find out the thrilling conclusion uh, of uh, Dark Souls 3 in the next episodes. Thanks. Bye.